I'm Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please click the thumbs up or not so much the thumbs down, but you can always share and subscribe. And yeah, you can always write your comments and interact with my subscribers. And thank you for returning subscribers. Today, I just wanted to give you an idea of how much it costs to deport foreign immigrants foreign nationals, foreign offenders, foreign criminal offenders. A rose by any other name is still a rose. Anyway, it costs roughly about £12,000 per person. And so, you know, the other day when, um, on the 11th of February, when they'd planned to deport 50 deportees. The government was pissed. Boris Johnson was peed off because they planned to put 50 people on that plane and it would only cost them maybe about 240 per person. As it turned out, it worked out to about nearly 800 per person because only 17 left. But sometimes they only send it out with one person on a plane. Sometimes there's about six. But because they're so eager to do it, you know, through the back door, that's why they pay so much money. They can reserve. They could be very discreet and have people on the back of a regular plane and, you know, d just pay the normal fee one way. But no, they don't want to do it that way because that way they have to do things properly. That way people will see how they're treating the convicts. And I hear they don't treat them very nice. On those charter planes, they have them chained up. They can't even move. When they go to the toilet, they've got someone staring at them and they have to keep the door open, even when they're having a poo. How degrading is that? That's what it's like on those charter flights. Remember that guy, that Nigerian guy that died on a charter flight through excessive force by those security guards. They also had 173 escorts. Why do you need so many escorts? Do you think you're herding a load of wild animals or something? Why do you need so many escorts? Apparently they need, sometimes they need three to four people, escorts per person. In some cases they need six per person. Why? What can they do when they're chained up? They're, they, you know, they can hardly walk because they've got those, those cramped things around their legs. They've got like a body thing that kind of ties them to, that ties them to the chair. That's how, the, that's how they put on the planes. I wonder if you know that. They don't just sit freely like on a regular plane. Even on a plane where they can't go anywhere, they're chained down like wild animals, strapped tightly so they can hardly move. Anyway, I'm going to put the sauce below. It doesn't say anything about the strapping down, though, the one that I'm going to put down. That is just from a previous um, news release that I saw. So don't go quoting. It's just something I read. I've got to be very careful, you know, when I'm doing these videos because but I say things and I sometimes I speak out because it's what I've read and it's kind of what I know because what I say is like from a credible source, but I don't always keep the link. So therefore, you know, just um, research stuff yourself. Don't take everything I say as gospel. OK, that's all I'm asking you. Um, anyway, the Home Office spent 12,000 per person on charter flights in the last quarter of 2018, 2019. The last quarter is just three months. £12,000 per person, taxpayers' money. A Freedom of Information request has revealed. One such flight took just one deportee, the Guardian has learned. They're so desperate to get people out. 
So, um, on the 11th of February, a charter flight to Jamaica took off from Doncaster Airport carrying 17 people. The Home Office had initially planned to fill the plane with dozens more people, but a ruling by the Court of Appeal on Monday evening prevented many of the deportations. And you remember that Boris Johnson went into a rage because, you know, they weren't all put on the plane. You know, it's really upsetting when they'll go into a rage, you know, because of a formality, because you haven't got people on the plane, as opposed to thinking to yourself, well, if we'd done the process properly in the first place, this wouldn't have happened. It's almost like they're upset that the people have rights, the people had had their rights um acknowledged it's almost like that's why they're upset they shouldn't have their rights acknowledged they should have just been dumped on that plane and be gone with them anyway so even so it cost them 705 pound per person because there was only 17 on the pl on the flight if all, if all had gone, it would have been quite cost-effective from UK to Jamaica at £240 per person. According to a response from the Home Office to a freedom of request from no deportations, 37 people, 35 men and 2 women, were removed on charter flights in the last three months of 2019, accompanied by 172 Escorts. So, thirty seven. It's just seventy three, you know, seventy three passengers and a hundred and seventy two escorts. Bearing in mind, oh, yeah, two women, thirty five men and two women. 172 escorts. What a waste of resources. What a waste of taxpayers' money. The total cost to the Home Office of the four short-haul charter flights to Germany, France, Switzerland and Kosovo was £443,089.62. This works out to £11,975 per person. Can you imagine for sh four short haul charter flights? They say it is possible to buy a one way ticket to some of these short haul destinations on a scheduled flight for less than a hundred. I went to Spain for 40 quid one time. France ain't that much either. So, the cost per person on some of the charter flights was more than a hundred times the going commercial rates. Concern has been raised about the treatment of the deportees as well as the impact of these flights on the climate emergency. The Freedom of Information response revealed that one flight carried one deportee, another two and a third six. A spokesperson for the campaign group End Deportation said the real issue here is the human cost of the brutal, inhumane and barely legal deportation system. From the abuses we know are suffered in detention by security guards during deportation and very often the real risk of serious harm, even death, in the countries people are sent to the human cost of deportation charter flights is immense. Well, to be honest, they don't really care about the people who die in the other countries. They care. They probably care a little bit about how much it costs them to get rid of the immigrants. Because that's the way they look at it. You know, they just want to get rid of them at the least cost possible. And it's costing them a lot of money because they're not doing things properly. They're trying to do things through the back door. They're trying to stop people from exercising their rights. 
And as a consequence, because people are protesting and they have to obey the law once they're found out, they get peed off. They'd much prefer everybody kept their mouth shut. They shift them out very, very quietly and that everybody, well, they're happy. They don't care about the families of the people who are gone. They don't care. They don't care if they go over there and they kill themselves or they hurt themselves if they don't have a job. They don't care about that. They just care that they get them out of the country as cheaply as possible. That's their main objective. There is also a huge cost to the taxpayer of both detention and deportation. These costs could be completely avoided if the government let legal people stay at home with their families and communities. A spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion said, not only is the government continuing the legacy of the hostile environment, fostering division in our UK society, but with the collusion with airlines on these home office charter flights, they are directly contributing to the climate and ecological emergency, making a hostile environment for us all. Bella Sankey, the director of Direct Detention Action, said almost half a million pounds of taxpayers' money to deport 37 people in austerity Britain raises serious questions about the government's approach to budgeting. I mean, we're living in hard times and they've got all this money to deport. It's almost like they look for the most expensive way to get rid of them. And why are things expensive? Because they're not doing things properly. They do things properly. If everything was legal and above board, it wouldn't cost taxpayers that much. But they're always trying to get one over. And then when they get found out, they get peed off. It's not our fault that you're not abiding by the rule, that by obeying the law, the same law that you've set. It's not our fault. Tell us to mind our own business. We can't do that because you're treating people unfairly. But charter flights were not only bad value for money. They create perverse incentives for the authorities to bypass due process, as we've seen with this week's controversial Jamaica deportations requiring the Court of Appeal to step in. We need, we need much more transparency around government policy in this area and urgent reform. But are you going to get it? Last year, it emerged that the Home Office spent more than 250000 on charter flights to deport people in three months without a single plane leaving the runway in that period. 250000 wasted. Why? Because they haven't followed the rules. They're trying to illegally deport people. And because they're trying to illegally deport people and they get found out, they're wasting taxpayers' money. We're having to fork out this money for their negligence and stupidity and short-sightedness. Always trying to do something undercover. They think they're so clever. And they don't expect people to have intelligence. They don't expect people to have money, especially black people. They don't expect black people to be intelligent and have money for lawyers. So they think, oh, yeah, they're not going to have enough money to fight this appeal. Let's get them out quick. No, they, they, nobody don't know the law. Nobody doesn't know them. And the funny thing is, they don't even know the bloody law. The people who are doing all these wrong things, they probably don't even know that they're doing it wrong. They probably don't even read all the paperwork. When you hear some of them talk, you wonder if they're even educated. So I think, you know, a lot of those staff that they have there, they probably don't even know what's lawful from what's not. How do we know that they know what's lawful? As far as they're concerned, they've just got a job to do. They go out and do it and they don't read the policy. They don't read anything. The government has used charter flights regularly since 2001, removing people to countries including Albania, Ghana, Nigeria and Pakistan. 
In 2015, a Moroccan convicted cyber terrorist named Yunus Tasuli was chartered a private jet alone so he could be deported back to his country. A private jet! I wonder how much that cost. They're not saying how much that cost. The Home Office said we make no apology whatsoever for seeking to remove immigration offenders and dangerous foreign criminals. We ain't got no problem with that, love. But just don't make it up. Because if you were honest and above board, they'd be on the plane. If you stopped your trickery, you know, trying to stop them from getting um, a service, phoning people, getting trying to get legal assistance and trying to get hold of their family. If you hadn't stopped all that, they would be on the plane. But you're trying to be clever. That's the problem. So we ain't got a problem with you shipping out dangerous foreign criminals but are they dangerous foreign criminals that is the question and if they were why do you have to sneak them out through the back door why do you have to wait until one o'clock in the morning after you've promised that the plane ain't leaving because you cannot justify chartering a flight and not using it that's why the Home Office makes enforced returns by both charter flights and regular scheduled flights. Charter flight operations are an important means to return foreign national offenders and immigration offenders where there are limited scheduled routes or where there are more disruptive immigration returnees. How the hell can these be disruptive immigration returnees when they're strapped down with all kind of restraints? How can they be disruptive? They can't even bloody move. What a load of cobblers. The Home Office, to, uh, uh, well, the Home Office have been ordered to release information about the detainees' access to lawyers. You know, they, you know, to do with the phone lines. Home Office has challenged over failure to ensure all people threatened with removal from UK had access to phones. The Home Office has agreed to release information about whether it has deported immigration detainees who did not have access to working phones to contact their lawyers. It's a bit like locking the gate after the horse has bolted, don't you think? What is the point? So you have this information that these people did not have access on their phones, but you deported them anyway. What are they supposed to do? An emergency ruling by the Court of Appeal last week prevented the authorities from removing anyone from the UK who had been held at two detention centres near Heathrow Airport, Harmonsworth and Colebrook, where there had been a problem with the O2 phone network in the weeks before. The judgment came just hours before a deportation charter flight to Jamaica was due to take off from Doncaster and Sheffield Airport. The decision followed a legal challenge by the charity, Detention Action, which expressed concern that mobile phone outages had prevented detainees from accessing justice. Home Office guidance states that detainees have the right to five days of access to their lawyers before any removal takes place. The flight left with just 17 detainees on board, 25 people from the Heathrow detention centres did not fly and eight others due to board the flight issued individual challenges that meant they did not have to board the plane. Eight others due to board the flight issued individual challenges that meant they did not have to board the plane. In other words, they were not, they were not foreign criminal offenders. Otherwise, they would have been on the plane. Some of them were waiting for their bloody application to be finalised. The thing is, if they have committed a crime, just supposing, because we don't know whether it's overstaying, whether or not they've committed a crime. We don't know why these eight 
would, did not have to board the plane. But if they have committed a crime, and based on that, they have their indefinite leave to remain removed, that would have still meant they were eligible to be on that plane. So they probably weren't meant to be on that plane at all. They probably were non-violent criminals or they were overstayers or they were waiting for an application. In, the, in a statement which forms part of the legal action, the Home Office has admitted that all detainees in Heathrow detention centres were supposed to have received new non-O2 SIM cards by the 5th of February, giving them five working days to contact their lawyers before removal. However, three detainees had no new SIM until the 6th of February. For, six deta for 16 detainees, no time or date was recorded for when they were given a new SIM and 28 out of the total of 56 earmarked for the charter flight were never given a new SIM card. The Home Office has admitted that the phone access problems began on the 13th of January, although it didn't begin distributing new SIM cards until the 5th of February. So the first that gave them... Hmm. Six days. Detention Action argues that potentially hundreds of detainees have been affected by a lack of access to justice. As a result of this problem, not just those earmarked for last week's charter flight to Jamaica. Bella Sankey, Director of Detention Action, said after the court hearing, we had originally been told by the government they planned to appeal against the Court of Appeals order last week, which prevented some people from boarding the flight. They found out that the Home Office abandoned that plan. Yeah, they wait till everybody goes home, has a little chat with the Court of Appeal, saying, look, we've spent what? 250,000 on this flight, can't afford that amount and none of them to go out, as I've said before, so we better let this lot on the plane. We took the opportunity to press for answers about whether the phone problems had been fixed and whether, on, whether anyone had been removed without their right to access the justice upheld. The government now has to give the, us those answers by the end of this month. The only thing is, is that with a charter flight, if you're spending that amount of money, you should be able, it should be able to be on call. You should be able to say, okay, I don't need it for this date anymore, for the 11th. Um, can you please move it from the 15th or whatever? And there's no penalty. There's no charges. Why does it cost them so much? And why do they have to use that particular flight? I mean, surely there's some leeway. It's not like it's a little £300 ticket, is it? Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you, just so you know how much it's cost in the UK to deport our returning citizens to Jamaica. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.